Welcome back to the GSMC Sports Podcast. Just finished up talking about the Milwaukee Bucks and their loss last night headed into the All-Star break. We are going to be switching across the league to the Western Conference and one of the premier teams there in the Golden State Warriors who won a close one last night against the Jazz after almost blowing it and being up big entering that fourth quarter but they do pull it out. But the main storyline coming out of this game was, of course, Klay Thompson and the Warriors' decision to have him not start and come off the bench. He was replaced by Brandon Pajemski, their rookie, in the in in the starting lineup last night. It's interesting because I was a little surprised. This was the first game that Klay has come off of the bench since his rookie season, even when he missed two entire seasons in 2019, 20, and 2021 with those couple injuries, he came back late in the year and still started when he came back. Only played 20 minutes per game in that range for the first handful of games that he was active for, but still started. So this was definitely a new ish uh, obviously old almost you could say too but a different role period for clay thompson that we've seen for the past decade he first checks in at the seven minute mark of the first quarter the warriors immediately inbound it to him in which he takes a pull-up mid-range shot and he missed i'm like oh boy because obviously there's just been so much attention and pressure surrounding clay thompson throughout the course of this season and you know how he hasn't been great but he knocks down his next couple threes he finishes the first half with 17 points and it was in the third quarter really where he took over scoring 18 straight points for the Warriors down that final stretch of the third quarter to finish with 35 points he was 13 of 22 from the field he was 7 of 13 from three so he put on a very good performance for the most part now and he was doing it on all levels he was doing it catch and shoot coming around screens he made some shots off the dribble for three and he was attacking the rim a little bit as well so you know shades of old clay getting it all done and this 35 marked the season high for him so You know, just about his best performance of the season, which is good. But the Warriors almost gave this game away. And a part of that was the fact that Clay did not have a good fourth quarter at all. The Warriors came into the final quarter up 18 points. Clay played 10 minutes in the quarter. He was 0 for 4 from the field. So. Didn't really contribute much at all. We know that he's sort of a minus defender at this point after being one of the most prototypical and effective 3 and D guys really the league has ever seen. He's just not that guy anymore. The defense for the Warriors is 6 points per 100 possessions better when he's actually off the court. And sometimes those numbers can be a little skewed based off of the team success on defense what kind of lineups you're playing with all that different stuff but clay has been a starter for a lot of the year and you know they have been struggling more with him on the court than off the court on the defensive side of the ball a little bit to be expected considering the injuries that he had to deal with those couple years but i digress in that fourth quarter quick side note here i love Keontae george i loved his game at Baylor when he was there I feel like I've given this same sort of speech before on the podcast before but I think that he is great he was the 16th overall pick for the Jazz this season so falls just outside of the lottery and he's just been so impressive to me he scored 33 points last night he had at least 13 or so in the third quarter alone And he was red hot from behind the three-point line on a night where they needed it because Laurie Markkinen really struggled. He was 9 of 16 from three, and he had six assists. So I think that he is great. He can take over a game. I think that he has that in him. 
Um, he did have a really tough travel call with about a minute and 14 left. That was a little bit of a costly turnover for him there. But, you know, he's young. This is a Jazz team that doesn't really have too high of expectations. So these are growing pains through the process. But him and Colin Sexton as well. Sexton had a great game. I think they're a very intriguing backcourt just by the fact that you know they are still young like Colin Sexton he's still just 25 years old I know it feels like he's been in the league forever but you know he still has time I have really liked what he's been able to do since coming into Utah I mean you're not going to find a guy in the NBA that plays harder than Colin Sexton does and he also went off for 30 plus points last night I was really impressed with the two of these guys but Clay Thompson fast forward here a little bit as the Jazz make this comeback it gets to be a close game Clay Thompson misses a three-pointer with 24 25 seconds left and the Jazz had the ball back with being down just one and a chance to win the game Markkanen who I mentioned he was really really struggling from the field in this game he misses a three-pointer in the corner. John Collins grabs the offensive rebound. And at this point, I'm he gets tied up, and I'm screaming at the TV, call a timeout. And they don't. Instead, they, you know, Will Hardy lets them play on a little bit of... I didn't love the decision to not call a timeout. I understand in the heat of the moment there, there was a lot going on. The ball was in the paint. Not sure maybe whether or not from Hardy's perspective, whether or not he had possession, but I would have preferred them to call a timeout there. They don't. John Collins throws it away. Also, quick little side note, he is visibly very upset with himself for this turnover. Colin Sexton is just such such a class act. He's like trying to pick him up. He's repeatedly chest bumping him. If this might only hit a small few of viewers, but there was a clip a handful of years ago that was circulating. I'm actually going to leave this because I want to fact check before I before I make this sort of a statement, but he's just always been a phenomenal teammate of he's just been an, a phenomenal teammate. He always gives the energy. He's always there for his teammates when they sort of need that energy boost. They need that little bit of confidence and I, I just, I really enjoy watching him play. So, um, that's that. The Warriors end up getting the ball back after that turnover. Steph Curry is intentionally fouled, and he makes both his free throws. Colin Sexton actually gets another look at a an open three to tie the game at the buzzer, but he can't knock down the shot. It was a good look. There's really not much you could not much else you could ask for in that situation. So the Warriors end up coming away with this game. I think that between this whole Clay Thompson saga, him coming off the bench here, him with the really bad intentional foul in the game versus the Clippers the other night, and you know the collapse of that game as a whole almost blowing this game, the Warriors have won six of their last seven games. And I think that that's a, sort of flown under the radar a little bit. And a little bit, I wouldn't say for good reason. I mean, the Warriors are still kind of what we knew they could be. They're a sleeping giant. They can get themselves together. I mean, I don't understand. The next handful of Warriors games I watch, I am just going to watch their defense. I don't care about their offense because their offense has been phenomenal as of late. I think that another sort of sneaky um storyline that's going on with this Warriors team is the fact that Andrew Wiggins, who was obviously so impactful for them during their finals run in 2022, he has not been the same the past couple years, was dealing with some sort of personal matter down the stretch of last season and really just hasn't looked to be himself since then. But he's playing a lot better specifically since Draymond has come back and we've seen this offensive explosion from the Warriors he's knocking down threes some more I mean he was shooting horribly from the three-point line for a good part of this season and you know if they can reconcile some of this for him because 
by the trade deadline, he was just about a negative asset in terms of based off of the contract that he has, they probably would have had to attach picks to him to move off of him. And, you know, at that point, it just didn't make sense for them to do so because this is somebody who they up close saw how important he was for that finals run, specifically on the defensive end. So, again, offense is good. I'm going to be locking in on the defense for this Warriors team because I don't understand how they're quite so bad. I know that Clay isn't the same defender as he used to be like we already touched on. Wiggins, to that note, is not quite the same player. But, you know, they're relying on guys like Brandon Pajemski, who Pajemski, I think, is a pretty good defender. He plays extremely hard. We mentioned on the show yesterday, he leads the NBA in charges drawn. So, you know, I don't think it's him. I'm just, I'm not sure what it is with them. And it's something that I'm definitely concerned about because obviously the offense is always sort of headlined the Warriors dynasty because you have the shot makers and Steph Curry and Kevin Durant and Klay Thompson, one of the best shooters of all time. But they were as good as they were because of the defensive end. And I just think that we've seen time and time again, it is so incredibly difficult to win a finals in the NBA if your sole calling card is offense. That's why a team like the Mavericks, I have my doubts with because I don't think that they're good enough on that defensive side of the ball. So, you know, if they want to figure out any sort of a resurrection for this team in the latter half of the year, it's got to be on defense. But as far as this whole Klay Thompson coming off the bench saga, it's interesting because now we go into the all-star break where we aren't going to have games for another week. So what are the Warriors going to decide to do in terms of Klay Thompson? I think that him coming off the bench is probably the best way to go. I think that Pajemski, I mean, he started a handful of games. I didn't think he was phenomenal in the first quarter and that sort of first um, first set of minutes that he got. I don't know if it was potentially because of a little bit of that extra weight that was on it because before it was for injuries, this was Pajemski starting over Clay Thompson and it was a it was a national story. So I don't know what it is. Ultimately Pajemski turned into a fine game. So I've probably already spent too much time on that conversation. But I think that Clay coming off the bench is the better way for them to go down the stretch of the season. Now you're relying on a guy in Pajemski who was a late first round pick out of a mid-major school so there's not a ton of pedigree there and the Warriors have been a very high pedigree team for the majority of this dynastic run but I think the way that they've been able to develop him over the course of the year I think the way that Kaminga has been giving you minutes Wiggins if he's turning this corner I mean it gives you the better two-way ability from one through five really and Clay, I think, you know, when he's not providing you the scoring, I don't think that he's providing all that much. Now, IQ is still definitely there. Like, he is one of the best role player would be extremely di diminishing of what Clay Thompson has been in his career. He's a Hall of Fame player, but he's never been, you know, the number one. He's been, especially because a lot of his game comes from the off ball, especially as of late. So, I mean, he's so smart how to navigate around Steph Curry, around Draymond Green, knowing the spacing, where to be, all of that. It's just a matter of whether or not his shot is going to go in. And we've seen some big nights from him, like last night, but we've seen him get cold by that same stretch as well. So it becomes, I think, very difficult to sort of way how to use him and I think that you're going to get more energy and more of a defensive spark from these younger guys who I mean Clay has just as much to prove pretty much honestly the way that the national spotlight is on him right now he has just about as much to prove as these young guys do as well you can see it and you know it's interesting because like I'm in a group chat with some friends and 
one of them last night was talking about how he thinks that Clay has been such a baby about this whole benching situation and him not being at the peak of his powers. I don't think that through, you know, the entire season, it's been great with him, but I think that as of the past few weeks, he's been a lot more understanding of the reality of the situation where he started the year. He's saying, I'm a max contract player. I want all the money all of that, he didn't really understand the idea of him not being in closing minutes and all of that. Recently, he had a quote saying, I am willing to do whatever it takes to stick with the Warriors. That's what I want to do, even if it means a reduced salary for next year because he is an upcoming free agent. So I think that, and we've seen those interactions between him and Steph Curry on the sideline of Curry trying to pick him up and him being really upset Again, we talked about it. This is almost human nature. It's very frustrating when you can't be what you know, when you aren't what you know you can be or you have been. And I think that it's a very human issue that he's dealing with. And I think that he's coming more so to terms with it going forward. And that's the thing. I think we get caught up as well very much in who's starting, who's coming off the bench, all of that. I mean, Clay played the majority of the fourth quarter last night. So if he's on a heater, then you can play him. But now there's a little bit less of that expectation. He doesn't have to get maybe quite as in his own head when he isn't in those minutes where the Warriors are running with a hot group that doesn't include him. So very interesting it's almost a psychological issue as well with this Warriors team and what's going on. Um, what their ceiling is with him starting or coming off the bench, I still don't think it's necessarily championship caliber. But, you know, again, their winning six of their last seven games has flown a little bit under the radar. And I think that, you know, with the Jazz selling off some of their options and beating the Jazz last night as well, they should... They really should, unless things go disastrously wrong, they should be just about a shoe in I think, for at least the play-in tournament. And, you know, the rest we will see from there. But that is all I have on them right now. We're going to be taking our second break. When we come back, we are going to be talking about a team with a much higher ceiling, in my opinion, the Minnesota Timberwolves. So stick with us. Thank you. 